Hi, my name is Danica and today I want to talk about reality as fiction. This is the second part of a two-part series. In the first part I talked about fiction always being real and I will link that down in the description. It's a bit of a weird philosophical topic for this channel, but we're just gonna go with it. Recently I finished rereading Thomas King's book The Truth About Stories, which is excellent and I highly recommend it, and one of the themes in this book is about the importance of stories. This is actually a collection of Massey lectures, and one point that he keeps coming back to is the sentence, the truth about stories is that's all we are. It discusses how stories like creation myths can shape how we see the world and outline possibilities for living in it. I really believe, and I know this is coming from a very biased place, that the only way we can understand the world is through stories. This is especially true of understanding ourselves, as well as other people. Things that happen in our lives may be random and inexplicable, but we shape them into stories. Once you've formed a narrative about your life, whether as comedy or tragedy or something else entirely, you can make everything that happens to you fit that narrative, which causes you to prioritize some events and dismiss others. The story we tell about ourselves becomes the core of our identity, which is why when you want to know everything about someone, you would ask their life story. And we do the same thing with other people. We don't remember them as a list of personality traits or a collection of the random things that they've done, but basically as characters. We can't possibly know everything about another person, so we create a narrative for them. You may have experienced a time when you're hanging out with a friend and you see them around someone else, whether it's another friend or a family member, and they start acting in ways that you didn't understand as part of their personality. That other person has a different narrative for them, and your friend adapts by being two slightly different characters around you both. You can argue that we all do this to some extent. We conform to the narratives that we see other people having for us, even though we understand them to be really simplistic versions of our complex selves. We become the hardworking employee, or the fun aunt, or even the disappointing daughter. Because although our narratives of ourselves are as complex main characters of a story, we also act as side characters in other people's stories, and those roles might require us to be less multifaceted. But it's not just true of people, we also create narratives for the world. Narratives like the American Dream are hugely powerful. In this case, it frames the world as a place where people work hard and achieve great things. Conversely, if people don't achieve great things, they must not have been working hard. This has caused people who are poor or struggling to support the interests of the wealthy because they see themselves as the soon-to-be rich. They're just at the beginning of this story. Their narratives see the world as a chaotic, apathetic place to their individual existence, or as a place that is benevolently guiding them towards a positive future. These narratives are lenses that show us different aspects to the world. And I would argue that no one can live a healthy, cohesive life without these narratives, even though they obscure us to possibilities. Reality is a story. There is no way that any one person can understand the real world without applying a story to it. More than that, I would argue that we can only really remember things as stories. Our memories become a collection of stories, things that have a beginning, middle, and end. The things we remember the most are the ones that we can repeat because they make for such a great story. The more we tell a story, the more that story supersedes in importance what really happened. One of my favorite tropes in fiction, usually TV shows, is when you get to see the same event from several different perspectives and you see how it changes in each telling. Even if no one is actively lying, these scenes always play out a little differently because everyone is telling their own story. Most likely they are telling a story that fits into their grander narratives about themselves and about the world at large. So what really happened? Well, you can believe that it's a bit of a blend of all these stories and you're just getting fragments of it. But in my grand narrative of the world, there is no objective reality. It's impossible for there to be an objective observer, and even if there were, in the process of it becoming a memory, it would have a story applied to it and stories require omission. I was going through my Tumblr when I was thinking of making this video, and I found a couple of quotations I thought were relevant. One of my favorites that I've reblogged is from the book The Storytelling Animal, which I have to read sometime, and it says, We are, as a species, addicted to story. Even when the body goes to sleep, the mind stays up all night telling itself stories. The one I found most pertinent is from an article called Why Fiction is Good for You in the Boston Globe. It says that fiction is more effective at changing minds than nonfiction. The article argues that this is because we read nonfiction more skeptically, but I also think it's because the story is easier to absorb and remember than a list of facts. I'm sure that most readers can remember a story that changed their mind about a subject, even if, or possibly especially if, that story was fiction. So so this is the other reason that I find the sentiment, it's not real, it's only a story, ridiculous. 
Not only are stories real in the sense that they reflect reality in some way, but reality is also a story. We understand things and people through stories. Stories about which people are main characters and which people are background characters in life. Can you see the cat? Hi. Lie down. Lie down. Stories about whether things improve organically over time or whether it's a small group of people fighting very hard to change things. And stories about what an ideal society would look like. Stories are not just entertainment, they're the scaffolding of our belief systems. The framework that we fit our memories and opinions into. As Thomas King said, if you want to change the world, you have to change the stories. Which is also part of why diverse books are so important, but that's another point. Let me know what you think about understanding the world through stories. Do you believe in a reality outside of the stories we tell about it? Let's get philosophical on booktube. And thank you for watching. Bye! Stories are not just entertainment, they are the scaffolding that we hold.